Chairman Pitts, Ranking Member Green, Honorable Members of the Committee, thank you for holding this hearing and inviting me to speak on H.R. 2878, a critical piece of legislation. The bill would delay Medicare's physician direct supervision requirement for outpatient therapeutic services in critical access in small rural hospitals until 2016. In January of 2014, the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services began enforcing a requirement that physicians must supervise outpatient therapy at critical access hospitals and other small rural hospitals. CMS's decision meant that routine outpatient procedures such as drawing blood or undergoing active therapy would have to be directly supervised by a physician. This decision by CMS would have put a severe strain on providers, particularly those in rural areas, while providing no quality improvements for the patients they serve. Most of these outpatient procedures are relatively simple, are very safe, and would not benefit from a federal mandate that a physician always be in the room. And as a practical matter, in rural hospitals across Kansas, such a requirement is simply not feasible. I was proud to introduce legislation last Congress that delayed this Medicare direct supervision requirement through 2014, and it was signed into law with bipartisan support. It's been widely recognized as an effective tool to improve care in rural hospitals and keep the regulatory burden in check. Unfortunately, rural hospitals are once again staring down the threat of this federal mandate from CMS. The existing law delayed enforcement action from CMS has expired. Accordingly, I've now reintroduced introduce similar legislation this Congress further delaying enforcement until 2016. It is about this legislation, H.R. 2878, which this committee has graciously invited me to speak today. When I think about the health care needs facing my district, there is nothing more challenging than ensuring access to quality and accessible rural health care. Rural America is struggling, and the 84 critical access hospitals in Kansas are the lifeblood of our rural communities. The presence of a facility such as a critical access hospital in a community could be the deciding factor in whether or not the next generations of children decide to raise their family in their hometown, or perhaps whether or not a business decides to locate there. Easy access to emergency care can be a life and death situation, and we cannot threaten the, the existence of these facilities by piling on the regulatory burden from Washington. Earlier this year, I invited the CEO of Holton Community Hospital to testify about this issue before the Ways and Means Committee Subcommittee on Health. Holton Community Hospital happens to be responsible for serving my hometown, Holton, a community of just over 3,000 Kansans. She explained in great detail that direct supervision would be extremely bur burdensome, costly, and is simply unrealistic at a hospital serving rural America. The result of enforcing this mandate would be to severely limit the type of services rural health care hospitals could offer, and it would threaten their financial stability at a complicated and uncertain time in our nation's health care system. H.R. 2878 will correct this problem. It will do so by reinstating the moratorium on enforcement of this unnecessary regulation. Its broad bipartisan support in Congress and the support of key stakeholders, including the American Hospital Association, the National Rural Health Association, and the Kansas Hospital Association. As a small town girl, I feel strongly that folks in rural communities deserve access to quality health care. I can't emphasize enough that rural hospitals our rural communities in Kansas and across the country depend on access hospitals like critical access hospitals, which are directly threatened by CMS's action. I hope that members from both parties can come together once again to ensure high quality, timely care is available to you no matter where you live in America. Companion legislation was introduced by Senators Thune, Moran, and John Tester. It's passed the Senate back in September. I also want to thank uh, my lead co-sponsor on the leg legislation, uh, Congressman Dave Loebsack, and for all his hard work and advocacy on the issue as well. I urge my colleagues to support the legislation and move it forward in a timely fashion. Thank you all for uh, allowing me to join you today. Chair, thanks to gentlemen.